probably wanting a greater and a deeper commitment from me or more abandonment. I'm not sure that I can do it, but I'm willing to try, Lord. Dave always feels I'm at fault. It's never him. <laughs> Come on, I'm just reading what you have in your mind a lot of times. <laughs> I, I want to get up and tell somebody. <laughs> I think the best way to help leaders is just tell them the truth. Because we all go through it. It's just that everybody wants to pretend like they don't. <laughs> Dave always feels that I'm at fault. It's never him. And to be honest, this is real, underlined real hard on my flesh. But I don't suppose it matters much. It's all pride anyway. <laughs> okay, now it gets really funny. I'm really sorry to have to report that I've had to tell the Lord tonight that I have gone as far as I can go. And I've been telling him this for two years. Take me as deep as you want to. I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do. But I really don't want to go on like this. I feel as if I've gone as far as I can go. Underline. Mm -hmm. Trying to impress God, I'm sure, with my threat to go. <laughs> Like he couldn't run the ministry without. Yeah, 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 good. I want the pressure to let up, exclamation mark. I would like to have some decent feelings, exclamation mark. I don't know for sure if I can get out of this. He may not let me out of it, but I never really thought I would back down. So on top of everything else I'm going through, I now find out tonight that I am a spiritual coward. <laughs> Nine years later, <laughs> I found I found this book in this, this, on December twentieth, nineteen ninety eight. Nine years later, and then I ran across this recently. But I wrote this on December the twentieth, nineteen ninety eight. Well, I was reading this book on December the twentieth, nineteen ninety eight. Well, I was reading this old notebook and thought I would give you an update. Well, I was reading this old notebook and thought I would give you an update. Come on, I'm trying to give you the courage to hang in there. Come on, that's good, that's good. Things have changed drastically. I'm now on 375 television stations, 250 radio stations. Our ministry is prospering like crazy for the preaching of the gospel. I've changed drastically. I enjoy peace almost continually. I have continued all these years to have various health struggles, but in the midst of it all, God has given me grace to do all he's called me to do. It's been hard at times, but I can report from experience that God is faithful. I now have four grandchildren, only now I have 11 grandchildren, <clears throat> and, I, and I have one on the way. My son got married a few weeks ago. Dave and I love each other very much, and we get along really good almost all the time. <laughs> From 1989 to 1998, Come on. when there were no entries. Come on. <laughs> I can sum it up in two words. I grew. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Now notice, I didn't say my ministry grew, yes. although it was growing, little by little. God has a little law that we don't like called gradual increase. Mm -hmm. The law of growth is always gradual increase. If you try to watch, if you put a seed in the ground and you try to watch that plant come up, you're going to think it is never coming out yeah. of that ground. It's good. It's good. And so God wants us to plant our seed and then just keep doing what he asks us to do. And I'm going to throw two words out to you. Enjoy life. Yeah. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about enjoying where you're at on the way to where you're going. Mm. It's good. It's good. I said enjoying where you're at on the way to where you're going. Amen. Because I can tell you, a lot of people in ministry don't enjoy the journey. Mm. 
for a variety of reasons. One of which is they have such a huge vision mm -hmm. that they can't seem to be satisfied with anything other than the finished product. And so they end up wasting most of their life because we arrive at different places on our journey with God, but most of the time in our life we are going somewhere. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Most of the time in our life we're going somewhere. We reach a destination and we enjoy that for a few days and then pretty soon we got another dream, another vision, and we're going somewhere else. Yeah. And I can tell you that I wasted a lot of my years not enjoying where I was going. Well, I did, did not enjoy where I was on the way to where I was going. And it's not just people in ministry that do it. People do it in their everyday life. I'm going to, I'll, I'll enjoy, I'll be glad when it's the weekend. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad when it's vacation time. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad when winter's over. I'll be glad when summer's over. I'll be glad when the kids get in school. I'll be glad when the kids get out of school. <laughs> I'd be happier if I was married. I'd be happier if I wasn't married. We're always going to be glad some other time. Yeah. Yeah. But God wants us to treat every day that He gives us as a precious gift from Him. Life is a gift yes, from God. Yes, it is. And not one moment of it should be wasted being angry and self-pity. Wanting something that you don't have yet, we need to learn how to enjoy what God is giving us now while we're on the way to the next thing that He wants to give us. And so I grew <laughs> during that time. Not my ministry grew, I grew. My ministry was growing, but little by little like everybody else's does. And one of the things I was learning how to do and had to have a great deal of chastisement from God to ever get there, was how to enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. Now I can say that I've pretty much come to the place where, and it is a decision you make, I've decided that I'm going to enjoy every single thing that I do. Yes. I will enjoy myself tonight up here on this platform. Come on. Right. I, will, I will have a good time doing it. There's no point in being up here if I'm not going to enjoy myself That's and have right. a good time doing it. So well, good. here's the thing. And, and hopefully this will help somebody. You know, when I first started doing this, I was so concerned about what everybody thought of me, mm. and rather or not what I was saying was the perfect thing and I'd heard from God, I couldn't enjoy anything. Wow. Well, you know, if you're overly concerned about trying to impress the people, you're not free, so you can't enjoy what you're doing. Yes, so one of the first things we have to learn is to be a God pleaser, not a people yeah. pleaser. Yeah. 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 And that doesn't mean that you don't want to make happy, but you know, there are some people that have already made their mind up they're not going to be happy, and I don't care what you do, you're not going to make them happy. So we need to just follow God and enjoy the journey so that He has given each one of us. No. Don't be in the ministry if you can't enjoy being in the ministry. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Don't be in the ministry if you can't enjoy being in the ministry. Yeah. I mean, there, there are people trying to pastor that don't even like people. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there are. There are That's people true. trying to pastor that don't even like people. Well, I think you got the wrong profession. You don't really like people. Or sometimes we're just in the wrong spot. You know, sometimes there are people trying to do one thing because that's the way they think it should be done, but actually they're gifted and anointed to do another thing. So we got to really find our niche and get in it and be a God pleaser, not a people pleaser. So I grew. Well, if you've done any growing in your life, you can feel the pain in those two words. <laughs> I grew. I grew. If you want to be successful in ministry, you have to learn to let God deal with you. Personally and individually. Don't spend all your study time just trying to get a message to go preach to somebody else. Mm -hmm. First, before you do that, let God give you a message for you. Amen. 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 You know why? Because 
The Bible says we're to be rooted and rooted deep in Christ. And we're to be rooted deep in the love of God. God talks about deep things. You know, many, many, many years ago, there was actually a whole movement called the Deeper Life Movement. And if you want to know the truth, I think we could use a whole lot of that in our society today. Because we have a lot of surface stuff. Yeah. And not as much 